Welcome back. I'm Bill. Here in the workshop today, I'd like to talk about recovering old generators that are badly clogged. Um, I bought not too long ago a, an old, uh, very, very heavily used and abused 220E. This is a generator off of it. Uh, I can't even blow air through it. Um, even after I got it off, I unscrewed the tip and I still couldn't blow air through it. Um, the, the cleaning needle would move just enough uh, that the, the cleaning labor worked, but it wouldn't come out. So um, this is pretty bad. A lot of people would just throw this away and buy a new one. Uh, I don't do that. In fact, I bought this uh, for parts and um, the only time I replace generators is if the cleaning needle is, is damaged and, and unrecoverable. Uh, sometimes that happens, but I pull those out of donors like this. I live in a smallish town on Vancouver Island and there's no place around to buy replacements. Uh, I'd have to buy them online or pick them up in the States and that's either expensive or inconvenient. So I have never replaced a generator or never bought a new one, I should say. So I'm going to show you how I recover these. So to start with, this was stuck. Looks like it's pretty badly carboned up, but if you work it back and forth a little bit, sometimes you can break that up and there it goes. Gently pull that out. As you can see, the needle is still good on that, so that's good. That means I can use this generator. Take the tip off again. Now, I can almost guarantee that the spring and the tube inside are not going to come out, but let me give it a try. Nope, it's not. I can try to grab it with needle nose pliers. There's a little spring in there. Oh. That's as much as it's going to come out. So here's what I do. I'm going to light my propane torch. I'm going to heat and quench this several times. Heating and quenching is going to break the carbon up. Make it easier to get this thing clean. The flame is carbon burning off the tube inside. Pliers and roll it around a little bit. Okay, I think that tube may have actually popped out from the heat. All right, let's drop that in the water. Saw some carbon shoot out of there. Basically what I'm going to do is heat it and quench it until I can get that cardboard or asbestos tube and wire out. I should say as long as it's wet, I'm not worried about it, but there's a tube in there. Newer ones it's cardboard, older ones it may be an asbestos braid. So again, as long as the asbestos is wet, I'm not worried about fibers floating around and breathing them in, but if it's dry, that's where you may need to take precautions just to make sure that uh, you aren't inhaling any asbestos fibers. So let's see if that did it. Ah, that did do it. 
And this does look like it's the long asbestos tube. We'll come back to that. Everything else is out of the generator. So the next step, I'm going to take this cleaning needle and the tip, and I'm going to take them in the kitchen, and we're going to boil those in some citric acid for a while to get them clean. So I'll see you in the kitchen. All right, we're here in the kitchen. I've got a pan on the stove. In there's maybe about a liter of water and half a teaspoon of citric acid powder. So I'm going to get that to a boil and then let it simmer away for 10 or 15 minutes and see how it looks. All right, I'm back. If I sound funny, it's because I put gloves and I've got a respirator on because I'm dealing with asbestos here. So let's see if we can recover this and if there's anything still usable here. Because asbestos won't burn, I can heat it with the torch and I can burn the carbon on it. And what's left should be reusable. That, or if it's not, I can remove the string from inside, assuming this has one, and I can rewrap it with uh, 16 gauge copper braided or stranded wire. But so far this is looking good. You can see it's turning white. The carbon is burning off. Problem may be if there's still carbon inside of this. You see, there's a spring inside of there, and I'm not going to be able to. I don't think I can get that spring out while leaving the asbestos intact. So. I'm going to leave this as it is. All right, while we wait for that other generator to boil out on the stove, I thought I'd show you one of these, because honestly, this is what I was expecting. Um, 220Es were only introduced in Canada in 1962, and by then, they were no longer using asbestos in these. This is what you'd normally expect if you were to pull the, the innards out of a 220 generator. Uh, this metal spring with a bulge at the top, and a cardboard tube. Now, heating the generator with this in it, if this, if say this was what was inside and it wasn't coming out, um, you definitely see flames coming out of the end of the generator because this cardboard tube would burn. Now, that's okay. Um, if this tube is, is uh, destroyed in the process of removing it, uh, you can wrap the, this spring with 16 gauge stranded copper wire uh, and that will do the job as well. The idea is to keep it centered and it seems to help with regulating heat and fuel flow. Uh, the other thing you can do if you can get your hands on brass wool or bronze wool, it's like steel wool but it's brass or bronze, uh, you can wrap the generator in that and it will work just as well as that cardboard tube. I think Old Coleman Parts sells cardboard tubes if you're in the States. They're pretty inexpensive if you want to just replace it with that. Um, but if it burns up, if it's charred, 
Don't worry, it will still work just fine. Handle it with care so it doesn't crumble and you can put it back and it'll be okay. Uh, the spring, if it's all carboned up, uh, you can hit it with a propane torch like I did the asbestos uh, sheathed spring. That should burn it off. Don't overdo it. Um, you don't want to damage the spring with heat. Uh, you probably won't, but be careful of that. Uh, or you can throw this in the pot with the citric acid and that will clean it up as well. So this is what I was expecting to see on, that, on, on this generator. Uh, with this asbestos in it, uh, I would expect that generator is probably from the 40s or maybe even the late 30s. Uh, so you never know what you'll find. It may have been new old stock that someone put on that lantern, uh, or um, they may have pulled the, when their generator like this went bad, they may have simply pulled a generator off an older, older lantern or lamp. Never know what you'll find, but we'll get it going anyways. All right, back to the stove. This has been simmering away for about, well, 20 minutes, probably. Uh, and you can see the generator is turning a brassy color where it was very dark before. So it looks like it's about ready to, it's about time to take this out and, and clean it up. So I'll meet you at the sink. Okay, the first thing we want to do with all these pieces is flush them with plenty of water because we've had, that, had, had them in citric acid. I'm going to want to take one of these, a, a round brush. You can use a gun bore brush. I found these nylon brushes that I got on Amazon for just a few dollars uh, work extremely well for this. And you can see the black goo that's, that's coming out of there. And we want to keep brushing this and flushing it out until all of that is gone. Picked up a little metal screen on the older generators. Back in the days when fuel wasn't as pure as it is now, they would put a little brass mesh screen in the top of the generator, and that would help catch particles so it didn't clog the fuel pit. So that's good. Since I'm here and doing this, I'm just going to go ahead and hit this with some steel wool and shine it up a little bit so it looks nicer. very carboned up, but that is coming right off with the steel wool. Now be careful with the needle, just go one direction. And that's good as new. Check the cleaning needle closely and see if there's any carbon left on it. But that looks good. I threw the generator nut in there while I was at it. Clean that up. And the gas tip, be careful with these, you don't want to lose this. I'm going to stick the cleaning needle in there and twist it around, work it up and down a little bit. Again, being very careful not to damage the needle. Just want to make sure that we've got this all cleaned out. And that's that. I'll meet you back at the workbench. Okay, we're ready to put this back together now. Now, I've dunked this uh, asbestos tube in water a couple of times just to make sure that it stays wet. That keeps fibers from going airborne. So, what we're going to do is to slide the cleaning needle into that spring carefully making sure it doesn't catch in there so that it comes out the other side and is all in one piece. And we'll slide this back inside the generator. 
Now, one reason why, one reason I'd like to save this is 220 generators are notorious for uh, pulsing. And I found these older generators are much less likely to do that. Now we'll go ahead and put the gas tip back on. Snug that up. Never over tighten these. It's brass. If you, if you tighten it too much, you can snap it right off. We'll pull the cleaning needle out, ready to install. Okay, we've got a 220E here. This is what this generator was made for. This is not the 220E it came from. that the cleaning needle is down. And we get it in that little hole. Turn it down so it's captive. And make sure that we still, yep, we're still captive in there. it up. We'll see how she runs. I'm going to open the valve and listen if make sure it makes that sputtering sound. So anyhow, that's how I uh, recover a really carboned up generator. Don't throw it away, take it apart, heat it and quench it, boil it out, put it back together, and uh, should be good to go for another 80 years. Thanks for watching, see you next time.